Hey folks, uh, welcome back to the Factorial Factory for a Factorial Fact Tutorial. I, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but we are going to talk about factorials today here in combo class. Now the exclamation point is a classic symbol, and in math it means the factorial of a number, which means to multiply all the integers between one and that number. Like 4 factorial, written as 4 with an exclamation point, means 1 times 2 times 3 times 4. But before we get deeper into factorials, to see like zero factorial and some weird factorial surprises and some mutant variations of them, let's first get a fundamental view for where things like one times, two times, three times, four would show up in our reality. Let's say I wanted to put three things in a specific order. How many ways could I do that? Well, let's say we're just ordering the letters A, B, and C into a three-letter string using each of those letters once. Well, the letter A could end up in either the first spot, the second spot, or the third spot, so there's three options for where A could land. And for each of those three options of where the A could land, they each have two options for where the B could land. Like if the A lands in the first spot, then the B could end up in either the second or third spot. And for each of those options, where we now have A and B in spots, there's only one spot left for the C to go which leaves us all six of the ways we could order A, B, and C. And we can see that at each stage, here we had three options times two options times one option. Three times two times one. Three factorial. And what about four items? How many orders could I arrange these four clocks in? Twenty-four ways to do it. That's four factorial. Now, even if you don't have any clocks to arrange, factorials do sneak into our reality a lot. So let's take a peek at some other ways factorials may show up in daily life. If I played the piano notes from C to G, but in any order I wanted, once each, like... or... There would be 120 options, because that's five factorial. And on guitar, if I have a chord and I pluck each string once, but in any order I want, like... There would be 720 options, because that's six factorial. Now, if I was doing laundry before a seven-day week and I washed seven shirts to have one to wear each day, there would then be seven factorial amount of orders I could wear these shirts, which is 5,040. And if I had eight rings and wanted to put one on each finger, not counting the thumbs, there would be eight factorial ways I could do that, which is more than 40,000 ways. And if I wanted to see how many numbers contained all the digits from one through nine exactly once each, the answer is nine factorial, because we're looking at all the ways I can order nine things. And if I was teaching this lesson to a class of 10 students with 10 chairs they could have sat down in, there's 10 factorial different ways they could have sat down in terms of who was in which chair. And that means that any time a group of 10 people goes to a restaurant or something, there are 10 factorial different ways they could sit down, which is more than 3 million ways. Another example of how big factorials can show up in day-to-day -day life is a deck of playing cards. Now there are 52 cards in this deck, so every time I shuffle them, putting those 52 cards in a different arrangement, it's one out of 52 factorial different ways this deck could be shuffled. An unbelievably massive number. And no matter how many shuffles have been done in history, the number of shuffles that's been done is an unbelievably tiny number compared to 52 factorial, which means that if you've shuffled a deck well, there's almost a 100% chance that you're putting it in an order 
that no deck in history has ever been in. And I find that pretty awesome. And you can use it as a meditative activity. Walk over to a deck of cards, give it a few good shuffles, and you end up creating something that has never happened before in history. Even if you just had half a deck of cards, like just taking the black cards out of the deck, 26 factorial is already unbelievably massive. And interestingly, the amount of ways I could shuffle all these black cards from the deck, 26 factorial, would be the exact same amount of ways I could order all the letters in the English alphabet. Essentially, one of the reason factorials are so fundamental is because they count the exact number of what's called permutations, or basically orders or arrangements you could make of n things. Like if we have three things to arrange, like that A, B, and C from earlier, there were six arrangements, three factorial. And this is one of the reasons why zero factorial was made to equal one. Because if you have zero things, it sort of has one way of arranging those things. If there's zero people and zero chairs, there's one way nothing for it to be. And another way of considering why zero factorial equals one is that factorials are multiplying things. They're a multiplicative function. So the zeroth element of a multiplicative function, sometimes called the empty product, is often taken to be one, the multiplicative identity that doesn't change elements under multiplication. Now, humans divide up time in pretty divisible ways when possible, so factorials show up all over our time systems. Like four factorial is 24, the exact amount of total hours in a day. But here's some weirder ones. Six factorial is the exact number of minutes in 12 hours. Now, why is that? Well, since each hour is made up of 60 minutes, we're looking at 12 times 60. And let's break these smaller. 60 is really three times four times five, and 12 we could call two times six, and we could throw a times one on there if we want, and that's six factorial in disguise. And how about this one? 10 factorial is the exact number of seconds in six weeks. And that's because of a similar logic where each week is composed of seven days, which is composed of 24 hours, which has 60 minutes, which have 60 seconds. And there's a way to rewrite all that as one times, two times, three times, all the way up through times 10. And here's one more. Eight factorial is the exact number of minutes in 28 days, meaning the amount of minutes February usually has. And if you want to use a similar type of logic, you can figure out why yourself. Now to see some fun mathematical aspects of factorials, let's look at this list of the first nine and see how big they're getting. And then imagine 432 factorial and how incredibly huge that would be. Now, 432 factorial actually has a special trait about it that no factorial before that has. And that seems sort of absurd. How could such a large factorial break some pattern and introduce something new? Well, let's see what special trait it has. If I take a normal factorial, like let's use four factorial, 24, and then I add its digits, two plus four equaling six in this case, and divide it, is it divisible? Will it get another integer when divided by the sum of its digits? For another example, if I take six factorial, then I have 720 divided by seven plus two plus zero, which is nine, and it is divisible. And all the factorials are divisible by their digit sum until 432 factorial, when after that point, some of them aren't. And here are the next factorials that aren't divisible by their digit sums. Numbers bigger than the amount of atoms in the observable universe. And some people say that tricks like this about sums of digits, which are of course written in our base 10 way of writing numbers, are more of gimmicks because if we had written our numbers in a different base, the sum of the digits would be different and there'd be a different first factorial that wasn't divisible by the sum of that base's digit representation. So, 
I think we should look at some other bases and see, do they have factorials that come this late? Now don't worry, this list is all written in base 10, but it shows us that if we were writing in different bases of numbers, which factorial when written in that base would be the first that wasn't divisible by the sum of its digits, the digits written in that base. And you can see that it's not just 432 factorial that comes late in our base 10 system. A lot of bases have this property come late. Some like base 21 are super late. In base 21 numbers, all the factorials from one through 1,899 factorial are divisible by the sum of their digits, but 1,900 factorial isn't. And there are some smaller ones on here too, like all these four factorials that pop up in a row and later. Now, why don't we take a peek at some mutant relatives of factorials? Because there's all sorts of... Oh, there, there's all sorts of alternate variations of them. One cousin of factorials is primorials, often written with this number sign hashtag symbol, which means that you only multiply the prime numbers up through that number. Like five primorial is two times three times five. All of the primes lower than or equal to the number. And primorials show up all sorts of cool places. We already saw them appear in an earlier episode because they're useful in a really simple way to prove that there's infinite prime numbers. And how about alternating factorials? That's where you take factorials and alternatingly subtract then add all the factorials lower than them. Like the fourth alternating factorial would be four factorial minus three factorial plus two factorial minus one factorial, which happens to be 19. And a fun fact about these is if you were trying to look for which ones of these are prime numbers, well, after these first two ones, which aren't prime, their one is too one-y to be a prime, this one's a prime, that one's a prime, that one's a prime, 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 oh, not a prime. And it's actually been proven that a finite number of alternating factorials are prime. Or what about hyperfactorials, which look kind of like factorials, but each term is raised to its own power before being multiplied. Like the third hyperfactorial is one to the first power times two to the second power times three to the third power, which is 108. And remember how factorials had some fun relationships to the ways that we keep track of time? Well, there's a fun one about the fifth hyperfactorial too. That happens to be the exact number of milliseconds, which are one one thousandths of a second in one day. What if I told you that there's a type of factorial called the double factorial written with two exclamation points after a number? Well, you might think that would make a big result and you might be disappointed. I think it's a bad place to have given that name and that symbol, but the double factorial makes numbers turn smaller than the normal factorial would turn them because the double factorial only multiplies numbers with the same parity as that same number up through it, which means the same even or oddness. Like six is even, so it multiplies all the even numbers up through six, and seven's odd, so you multiply all the odd numbers up through seven. And I get why they called it double factorial and use the two symbols, because sometimes you'll see even three exclamation marks or more to make what's known as a whole multi-factorial, where you skip down every third term or skip down every fourth term in which ones you're included to be multiplied, kind of like this is skipping every second term. There's also exponential factorials, where instead of multiplying all the integers up through some number, you stack them as exponents, which you calculate downward by convention. And this is kind of reminiscent of my tetration episode I did. And it does make me wonder about the possibilities of what a tetrational factorial might do. But exponential factorials already get really big really quick. Like the fourth one is over 200,000, and the fifth one has over 180,000 
digits. And these exponential factorials, as well as regular normal factorials, will reappear in a future episode about infinite sums. And there are tons more mutant variations like subfactorials and superfactorials and stuff, but we'll save those for later. For now, I want to show you one more thing about regular factorials that's pretty crazy. There's this weird approximation formula that as you plug in a number n, it approximates what n factorial would be. And as you plug in larger and larger n, the ratio of the approximation and the real factorial of that value gets closer and closer to one, meaning it gives better and better approximations for bigger factorials. And this is the approximation formula. N factorial is approximately the square root of two pi N times N over E to the power of N. Pi and E hanging out in there. Now, factorials, by definition, only make sense to use on integers. But what if you wondered what the factorial of one-half or one-and-a-half or five-and-a-third or something like that was? Well, that would be kind of like asking, if I plotted the factorials on a graph here, and they grow pretty fast, as you can see, four factorials all the way up there and five fact... I don't know, never mind. And seeing if there was some sort of equation that would graph a line that touched all of those points, then you could say, well, one and a half factorial is whatever that equation is. And there's something similar, although not identical to that concept, called the gamma function that we'll probably have to spend a whole episode talking about sometime. All right, it's getting pretty dark here in the combo classroom, so I might as well use some good old candles. Now, I could talk all day about factorials because there's so many cool places they show up and a lot of surprising different applications and places where we might see them in future, oh, in future episodes. Oh, okay, no. Okay. Okay, and uh, thanks for coming to combo class.